Welcome back to Luke Automotive Services. Today, we're aligning Sam's 1970 Dodge Dart. Pretty cool little drag car. It's a straight line car. We're gonna straighten up his front end. He's uh, apparently had it to a couple places to have alignments done and it seems to be a little bit hard to control when he's running down the track, at least at the track he's at. So we're gonna see if we can make his alignment as good as we can make it. I've already got the tire pressure set for what it would be running at the track. I have his body weight in the driver's seat and I have the heads hung. So let's take a look and see where we're starting from. So you can see we've got negative camber on both sides, which for a straight line drag car, we actually want our cameras to be zero. We've got three degrees of cross caster, which is gonna make this thing do all sorts of weird stuff when it hits bumps, and it probably pulls to the right. So you can see our toe is towed in quite a bit, almost, almost a full degree. Um, I prefer my toe to be at zero, and if need be, we put in bump steer eliminator kits to help maintain that toe no matter where the front end of the car is throughout. You know, when you launch, your front end lifts and your tires will toe in. And then when, you, when you're under power, it settles down to another spot where your toe is at a place. And then when you let off the, the gas, it'll squat and sometimes the toe will actually toe out. And the, the bump steer kits will eliminate that. It'll help maintain as, as natural of a zero degree toe through the entire range of the suspension sweep. Now, luckily for me, he actually has adjustable upper control arms and he has the adjustable eccentric cams in his setup, so it probably won't be too big of a deal to get this thing where we're gonna start it for a nice baseline. But we'll see, he's got some headers that hide, make the things, make the adjustments a little bit harder to get to. So I'm gonna make some adjustments and we'll see how far we can get it. I still need to check my ride height to make sure my ride height is even with the body weight in the car. And then we'll make some movements and see how good we can make this alignment. I'm pretty sure he's gonna like it a lot better than what it is now when I'm done with it. Uh, that jam that's not tightened correctly, that can cause a time joint to get pulled out of the rod. It's actually tightened to the joint instead of tightened to the pipe. That's not good. We'll fix it. Honestly, this is a pretty nice little car. <laughs> oh, our thrust angle's pretty good. Actually, our thrust angle's dead on. That's impressive. Found another jam nut on one of the rear Caltrack arms that was loose, so we'll go through and tighten all of his jam nuts on his rods with their heim joints so that the heim joints are in alignment so if they move they don't knock each other loose. This car is really nice. I dig it. Let's make it drive straight so he can have some fun in it this year. That's a considerable amount of play. In the Pittman arm, he has a new one that has a different style bushing. So even though this isn't bad for what we're trying to do with this, I'm gonna replace this guy. So my ride height's a quarter inch off from side to side, so I'm gonna balance those out. I'm measuring off the bottom of the frame rail. Basically, I'm assuming that the frame rails are square, but since the upper control arms mount off of the frame rail and the lower control arms mount off of the subframe, which also mount to the frame rail, the frame rails are what I'm going to use to set my chassis. The back end is completely square. It's dead center, so that's great. I don't have any adjustments to make there. Not that there are any really to make, being that this is a leaf sprung Caltrack setup with a, a mono leaf single a partial front, partial rear that are together. Um, pretty cool setup. Should be nice and stable in the back end and allow this thing to travel in a straight line while it's mostly on its back wheels. Um, so I will probably drop the ride height on the passenger side to make it match the driver's side. 
Then I'm going to stand up my camber and balance out my caster and install that other pitman arm. Sorry, not pitman arm, idler arm. Everything else in the front suspension is new or recently new with Moog parts and everything feels good, everything's tight. So we will make a couple adjustments and then we'll start setting this thing up. This is a very cool car. So a lot of what I do when I'm looking at a race car is trying to figure out what needs adjusted. Um, in this case, you can see this torsion bar is buried. And this torsion bar adjustment is three quarters of an inch to an inch different adjustment, which tells me I'm gonna have more spring force on that side than on this side. So when the car lifts, your spring pressures are different. So I'm going to basically set these to an even amount and then set my ride height because I feel like my spring pressures are gonna have different spring rates because they're tightened to different pressures. It's just another thing that you gotta do to make sure everything is set up correctly because when you hit that gas pedal and go straight down that track, if you have different force on one tire than the other, it's gonna make the car do funny things. So let's fix that real quick. You can see this is all rubber bushing. And this one has a different style bushing. We're gonna try this Moog unit and see if it gives us more stability than this one gave us. Let's find out, shall we? Ah, right, let's take a look. Look at how much more rigid that is. That'll help control our toe a lot better when we're going up and down. Good move, better part. Sometimes you find the steering binds on things that need to be clearanced. So you do that too. So I'm finishing up this alignment. It uh, I needed to clearance the upper control arms because when they drooped, they were actually contacting the subframe. I tightened up this caster rod, which I need to lock down yet, but my caster's within a tenth of a degree, and I can adjust that right here just by rotating this guy, and then I'll lock down the Allen, uh, Allen bolt, which is also consequently not tight. So we'll get those all locked in. This, uh, this car, when it lifts on launch, it actually tows out. So a bump steer kit would be beneficial on this, but the, the tow out on it, it tows in and on rebound when it drops. And it'll lift way farther than that. I mean, it's, it's a, almost a degree of deflection. So a bump steer kit would be very beneficial for this truck or this car. Uh, Dodge. Dodge trucks. Dodge Plymouth. Um, so we'll talk to him about bump steer kit. I'm real happy with where it's at now. We're going to probably take it out and give it a couple tests to see how it does. I did modify my ride height because my torsion bars were adjusted to make the fenders line up and consequently having the chassis lined up doesn't make the fenders even on the tires if that makes sense more than likely the, the body's flexed a little bit and you can see in the body line on this side that the fender's up so no big deal i just set it up for what the chassis measurements are on the on the unibody and the and the frame members that have been added to it to get everything as close to to get the spring rates as close as possible i think that will help a lot having mismatched torsion on your torsion bar front end could be pretty crazy. This thing would also probably benefit from bigger than stock torsion bars because it just looks to have the stock torsion bars in it and they make heavier duty ones that don't they don't give as much uh, they, they don't give as much <laughs> literally. Uh, we're actually going to be probably putting those into Mama's Mopar uh, charger so um, let me button this thing up and we'll see if we can get a test drive done on it. Is 
that noise. Is that guy? Is that guy creaking? Well, we'll make sure we lock him down too. So it's ready to pull this thing down, take it out on the street, see how it does. Um, I think it'll be a lot better. I found a lot of loose components, uh, way crazy offset on caster. Camber was offset. The toe was towed in severely. Um, there's a lot, a lot of, a lot of little things we were able to clean up. I did clearance the upper control arm so that they have proper travel without binding against the unibody, and put on the other Pitman arm, which. Sorry, idler arm, which gave me a more rigidity in the center link. Um, set my toe. I'm going to make a quick adjustment to the steering rod because there's a little bit of play in that. I'm going to see if I can take that up. And then we'll, uh, we'll take it out and see how he likes it. If you like this kind of stuff, click like, subscribe, leave us a comment below if you have any questions. And I chuckle every time the compressor comes on because it's right when I'm trying to say something. It's distracting. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. We appreciate you. Have a great day. Good one. Good one. This guy was in.